Mike to the BDG Dynasty Fantasy Football Channel. Today we've got a full Dynasty startup mock, and when I mean full, I mean probably a third or a half of it because we're only going 11 rounds deep for right now, but we want you to get the full experience. Therefore, we grabbed nine other people from the Discord along with myself and Adam and Andrew, and I we're going, uh, like I said, 11 rounds deep. This is including rookies. This is a super flex. This is full PPR with a tight end little preemie preemie action preemie. on it. So, again, uh, put in the chat, just give them a quick reminder. We're about to kick off right now, but give them a quick reminder. Tell them that rookies are far, far down in ADP, so do not forget about them when they are drafting. Y'all ready to go? I'm ready to mock y'all. Start this bitch up. All right. Let's see what the uh, – oh, all right. Put it on me. Easy. 102 is a pretty easy choice. I, so, I let Andrew pick my spot. This is, this is pretty simple. Patty, I mean, I don't really feel like there's analysis needed, but y'all tell me. Would you have preferred Josh Allen there? Yes. I would have too. Slightly, but I'm good. Same same tier. CJ Stroud. Your well, favorite. Your guy dude, favorite that's, that's the guy that song. traded in that's the trade song. too. Oh, yeah. Wild. Let's go. So you guys are against CJ Stroud at the three. I would take Hurts over him. I would him. not be taking Stroud there, yeah. You want me to do something freaky here? What do you I want you to. Do? You want me to do something freaky freaky here? I don't know about all that, but maybe. I mean, you do what you got to do. It's baby. Ramadan. You can't be talking to Andrew like that. I knew that was what you Bang. were about to do. Caleb Williams. Wow. Talk get about me my it. QB1. Get me my number one overall draft pick. Get me a guy that now has I'm Keenan <laughs> Allen and DJ Moore and Cole Komet and DeAndre Swift and a whole bunch of draft capital I, sitting cheeked up behind them. I will say, speaking of cheeks, I, I have a lot more of a problem with uh, the 105 than I do with the 103 here. You ain't really? buying? Yeah. You're not buying the... Uh, Brother, over Burrow and Lamar. I could have went with Burrow. I could, yeah, I could have went with Lamar there too. I, I, Lamar. I like. I mean, I, it's a mock draft. Here, here. So I actually think like after the first four, I probably could have went Burrow there. I want to be a little bit spicy here. I no, I get you. I also wanted to set the tone to make sure people don't forget that the rookies are there. But uh. like, listen, after those first four guys, and even Stroud is probably on that borderline. I don't think there's like a clear like tier where I feel. Listen, Burrow's been good for fantasy, but I also think like he falls into that. Sure. Maybe even C.J. Stroud category where Agreed. his name is better than what he actually brings to your fantasy lineup. He'll give you safety for a long time, but realistically, he's not a dude that gets into the uh, Jalen Hurts of like you know thirty-eight point games every three, four weeks kind of thing. You know, so I, no, I'm with you. Lamar definitely there, and he's coming off the big MVP year. But if you look at Lamar last year, coming off of the other year's campaign, he was in the 107, 108, 109 category. Lamar fell so much in value if you remember when people said he wouldn't play again. Yeah. Y'all remember that before the contract? You Goodness. You were buying the whole – there's like a thing on Twitter right now where they're saying the reason why Justin Fields hasn't been traded is because he's the quarterback one. You're not mm. buying that? Mm. I Like, you got to stop following conspiracy theory <laughs> Twitter accounts. <laughs> Talk just about Anthony. Talk about your two Just players. repeat yeah, what you said. Here. Just delete X and we'll be mm, mm -hmm. I, uh, ready for takeoff. So, I took Anthony Richardson at first. I think – I was debating between him and Justin Herbert. I like to go to the quarterback position early on, but – uh, especially in Superflex, I like to have a lot of good quarterbacks. But for me, the uncertainty of Justin Herbert right now and the rushing upside of Anthony Richardson, it kind of just threaded the needle for me. Um, but for my second pick here, I take my guy Kyler, man. That was dangerous for you to ask him to yap I there with love, only a minute on the clock. I, was, I love Kyler Murray here. It's a good pick. Uh, I feel like he's so undervalued in Dynasty drafts still. This probably feels more where he should be appropriately going. But I know in startups right now, he's going a lot further than this down the board. Yeah. No, I mean, I listen, if you're going to go quarterback here, I don't know who you could make the case for ahead of Kyler there. T-Law's on the board. I ain't really down with that. But mm, There goes Marv. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking about Marv there. That would have been a nice nice little start. Think about all rooks for the for the game. What about really spicing it up? What about saying it with your chest? Go with uh, 103 here. Big old boy. You think I'm not about to do this? I, I'm calling your bluff. You ain't doing that. You know who I'm taking? I'm calling your bluff. You ain't taking the rookie. Yeah. Here. Oh, Drake May, 103. There goes Drake. Now, I think, Trizzy. listen, like, wow. conservatively, I don't know if another, like, decent QB is going to get back to me. You can are, you, are you doing it? Fields. You ain't doing <laughs> it, are you? You ain't, you ain't spicy. You ain't doing nah, it. I'm know. calling him out. Dak, Dacky boy? I'm not getting there. Josh Ellipse is like 11 rounds. Are we, what? Just use your eyes right quick. I'm going Malik. Oh. The longer Ooh. we're in this draft process, like, the long, the more I'm, falling in love with Malik Neighbors, and I'm just – I'm putting on record I think he's going to be a uh, second-team All-Pro as a rookie. I think he's going to go straight into the All-Pro status. Wow. I'm there I'm there with Malik. Don't have time for all that. It's, it's March. March. What do you feel about Malik versus Puka? I prefer Malik. 
Malik. That sounds crazy. It, right though, now, Malik. Just had when, such a career. Come September, we'll see where the combo if, is. If Malik has a Puka season, he's like the one hundred and one next yeah. year in startup. Dude, yeah. if he has the best rookie season of all time, he's going ahead of. He's in Jefferson. Yeah. So I, I just took I took Malik over AJ Brown. I took him over Garrett Wilson. Um, I took him over a lot of good young wide receivers, mm. but. I'm I'm there with that's him. one of the things I hate about the 102 in this is like you do get that that uh, third round reversal, but you feel like you definitely dropped a tier. We're not. I don't think we're doing it's third, not round. third round reversal. We're not doing third round reverse. It's definitely set up for third round reversal, fellas. That's 302. I got. Is that snake not a guy. snake? Oh, I'm sorry. You, I apologize. <laughs> oh, I'm also can't read, so can't read, can't write, can't state. That's just down the road. You read it fine. You said I got the 302. Yeah, you just didn't process. You the just can't stuff. read, can't write. Yeah. I can't write. I can't do anything right. Small brain. It was Seven that. It was eights. that. Uh, Seven and one. You got the cat. Atlanta jersey on. It was the Desmond Ritter processing. Enough. Enough, yeah, think. definitely enough. Well, let me ask you, what, what would you take right now? I really thought about taking Daniels there, but I took AJ Brown. Would you guys have Daniels or AJ Brown? Uh, honestly, we just talked about this in the trade show, didn't we? I mean, you're the you're the Jaden Daniels guy. I know you that's are. I I you I didn't I didn't know my league one. mates, and I was thinking I could get him on the way back. So I I done yeah, effed up it twice. Didn't didn't effed up twice. Okay, Nico Collins at the three one. Do you remember that first, first yeah. video we made where he was like going at like the fucking early five? I, I feel like you might have did. This is the reason that, that happened. That also could be true. Yeah, but my hot take was like he was going in the fifth, and I was like, by real startup draft times, he's going to be going early third. Mm. And we said, I wish I, I should have told. We said there Daniels. wasn't a way in hell. Christian McCaffrey was a second round pick, mm-hmm. and look, we're gonna get. See, Max gonna end up falling to like the late yeah. third. I saw somebody was giving you crap about CMC in your last video. Were they oh. about what? What they yeah. say? I don't there remember was, that. No, you responded to it. You, they said something about like passing on C Mac in a hero RB build. Or how could you do that or something like that? I don't. I feel like they were literally just like, "Why'd you take JT over C Mac?" Just curious. I thought they were pressing. I feel like you, you a take this shit to heart so so. I deeply. care so you, much. You you, you be. Do. I care so much. Okay. You wear your heart on your sleeve in the comments, don't you? I'm sitting here. Okay, so yeah, now yeah. listen. I'm in. I'm in the third round, and I, I like Garrett Wilson a lot. I'm not really uh, keen on taking a running back until probably later in the dynasty startup draft, which is I think typical strategy for me. Dak, I think is. I think we got another five years out of Dak. Yes. Yeah, I also yeah. think Tua is probably going to get a nice contract. So for me, the pick is pretty easily between Dak and Tua. Where you um, at between the two? I think it's a good conversation. I lean Dak. Got 25 sure. seconds to make your mind. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to lean Dak as well. I guess Interesting. I, I was, I'm was. i just curious. The reason I think it's a good conversation is based on your first two picks. Yeah, because they're so mm. youthful. You but I also young. think they're going to be like impact fantasy players at worst by next year. So it's like I'm not really worried about Dak over the next one year. I, I definitely understand your that thought process. I think, though, I will say like throwing caution to people that are – playing the game I should have went I should have looked at my team and I probably should have went to there I'm not gonna lie okay all right well I mean not I'm not even gonna say this right or wrong but I just think Caleb like Malik neighbors probably rare scenario Caleb too but I think a lot of times right now because it's everyone's talking rookies we get all hyped up about the class and then we way overvalue what their production is going to be out of the gates rookies yeah. as a whole so I just think in general just something to think about with the rookie well, class Tua, yeah and, and Tua also on top of that point which is super real like I'm almost going into rebuild which is why I should have went Tua over Dak probably like Tua would age well into this team that's where, like, where by the time they're ready to roll he's still like 27 the thing about what, the reason I think that the, the another good talking point on that is now let's say you don't contend like you're wrong about Williams or neighbors being difference makers. Now you got to sell Dak. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you right. don't have to, but it's. I don't know. You're right. I should have fucking went to a. I'm, all a right. I'm an asshole. Well, I mean, tell us something we don't know. Let's get let's get disrespectful here. Let's say what it is. I mean, you went Tyreek Hill. I went Tyreek. Yeah, I feel like he say was just word? a value on the board of this. He's point. just basically the receiver version of C-Mac. Let me tell. Let me. Right I feel that, but I also. Yeah, we know it that wasn't meant to be like. Uh, you took him. Why are you? Yeah. Wait, what? Ha- are you backtracking? No, I'm saying we. I'm going to defend Tyreek Hill here because you said he's basically the receiver version of T Mac. I think, or C Mac. T Mac, let's T-Mac, go. The old Rockets reference, but nah, magic. I just meant thirty-year-old dudes who will win you a league if they. Yeah, but I, I feel like he has more tread than the running back position. Just being at a wide receiver position, we know that that's a little bit. How more long has he got? I mean, if you ask him from last year, he said he has two more years until he retires. Is what right. he said. Then that, that's what kind of makes me nervous about investing into Tyreek right now because I almost feel yeah. like he could just be like, eh, I don't. You really don't think CMC could give you two years? I think he. Potentially could. Yeah. But I feel more confident that Tyreek's still going to retire before he's, his body makes him retire. Like, he mentally will check out before. Does that make sense? I agree. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, that's what makes me a little bit nervous yeah. about him. So, that's just where I'm at with that. He but could. I think he's like AB, where he could play until he's 35. He I wants. love the players, but, man, Joshy is uh, really going to go fade me quarterbacks. Yeah. Wow. I do like the players a lot, though. I mean, 
Chase London, spicy, nice. John Taylor, I actually got that. Wow. Uh, what, let me ask you guys this. I, this one is so interesting to me because his points per game in like in a vacuum, if he stays healthy, you're like, holy crap, a chain to the moon. But it feels, I feel like He'll he's a little. Have that risk factor, that uneasiness in your mind, I think. Which is why I'm kind of, I don't want to take him in the fourth round this early, frankly. But curious what you guys think, if it matters even. I think. Andrew's going to yap. It's just, I'm I'm not buying in. Honestly, pretty much Ooh, ETN most too. of these guys, like both of those picks from on it, Kyron Williams and HN, I'm not buying into either of them at this cost. I'm just saying, if you're not, if you're not Bijan, if you're not JT, if you're not Brees Hall, if you're not those guys, I like, I really don't want you in Dynasty. The, the fact that Kyron is going at, at your price. over Jonathan Taylor is a little bit crazy that's to me. That's insane to me. Too. Yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, what about yeah. Drake London at 312? Let's go. That's peaked. Oh, Rome went. Fuck, I was hoping I can grab him. Nah, nah, fam. What do you guys think about my Ayuk pick there? I think it's where, I think it's where he goes. I, like I think it's, I, was, I, I think, I think. I, I Unlike Nikki Clicky, you are uh, your 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 direction's clear. Let's go. I was debating between him and Pittman, just because I have Nick Richardson. doesn't even have a. He's got a pick before he even gets a chick to go again. I got Richardson. So oh, that mm. snipe you? Yeah. But I don't know. What do you think? Would you, would Say you that rather again want about Pittman stack, to get the stack with Richardson? I was debating between the they're two. They're the same I tier, so they're the same tier, so I could get behind it. But I'm not. I don't. I don't hate it. I grab Pittman there. Like I, like I've been talking about, I think the single best value in Dynasty is these middle round, middle aged wide receivers. Well, that's Ayuk too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My tier three uh, in Dynasty ranks is like almost twenty players. Yeah, that makes sense. I uh, I actually really wanted McBride there because I was also going to say based on the tier factor, like, all right, maybe I wouldn't have gotten Pittman on the turnaround, but I probably could have got DK. I probably <clears> could have got T Higgins. I probably could have got one of those guys. Right. Hank. Hmm. Hank. Come on now. Misfit. Misfit's about right to misfit now. this whole draft. Miss his pick. Don't you dare do this. You get banned for life. DJ, okay. All right. Not same, bad. Same tierish. Not bad. Hmm. I feel like this his is. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, wait. Oh, that, actually, you're right. Damn. I'm out here. I can't see, read, not. I'm not. Yeah, you, I'm, you this is bad. Gotta pull you, here, here's what we're I wish y'all could time. see. They, they got me out here in New York trying to read this. Like, I'm. what does that say? I can't read that hey, shit. Hey, what the hell do we think about Sam LeBron? Brother, you could see Bowers? the board on your fucking phone. <laughs> I know, but I. Don't be fucking out here yapping. Long. No, it, it, it buzzed because the Why pick went. Why are we went. taking two tight yeah. ends right Saying here. that you're on. See, I don't. I, this is. You're the one that defends that. You, I, yeah, like, I got no problem with it. Okay. I don't you like could start it. all of them. I, you can. I just don't. I don't like it, but I get you. It feels like that's not a good choice. Like, would you rather Devonta Smith or or uh, one of these? I think I'm going to make this pick because I think this is about where he's going to end up going in the startup. If what we said is going to happen, top ten pick. I would say Nick, from a what? roster construction standpoint, I'd rather have Devonta Smith than Brock Bowers. I think we talked about earlier getting the two uh, elite tight ends. This was in the previous video, but having multiple elite tight ends, but I think you fall into multiple elite tight ends. I, you don't I, draft super, I super agree with, with that sentiment for sure. Is yeah. is like a lot of the tight ends you end up falling into. Yeah. He's giving you some, Ben's I, giving you some I, crap. I said, I said on a, a previous video, I think if, if JJ gets the draft capital, he'll end up going slightly ahead of golf. No, I think it's super fair. All right, my turn again. Uh, Andrews went off the board. So there you go, by the way, Andrews 412, 303 to Laporta. That's the difference in startups in this mock. Hi. Hi. All right, what do we got here? What are we doing? What are you doing? Oh, man. I don't not like this or love it at all. I don't like it or love it. It's all bad. I got to go a tier three receiver, probably. Let it roll. How about I get them both? Hey. Nice. Nice. I thought about taking You talking shit, three. Ben? How's that? <laughs> How about I get them both? <laughs> Rashi. Nice. See? Why not both? Look at <laughs> Hey. Oh. Shook your hand there. I see you. I can't see the screen, but I see you. <laughs> We see what you're up to. A little creepy. <laughs> Nick is so – he's ready to make this pick like his life depends on it. No, Look I'm at this. I'm not sure who I want right now. I, 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 got, I actually want to talk it through with you. All guys. right, go ahead. How, how do you value, like – okay, because I got, I got two guys, like, again, those middle-round wide receivers are just dudes that I love. I'm looking at DK. I'm looking at T. Higgins. I'm looking at those guys. There's also Zay Flowers on the board who is, like, obviously has not shot up to their upside, I think, yet, but they're – Kind of intriguing, right? The Zay Flowers, the Jordan Addison, like yeah. how do you mix and match the youth with what you think is production? I right think away? I think it's that's where Dynasty is so interesting because it's mm -hmm. all about how the community values it, and the value is a little more insulated with the young guys because we give them more time to produce. If you draft a producer right now that doesn't produce, that value is going to drop in a hurry. Yeah, I will say for myself when I'm looking at like that tier and that group of players, 
the safe. I like it. The difference maker for me is more so looking at opportunity. Like, for example, Zay Flowers is the wide receiver one on his roster, but Jordan Addison is the number two. So, like, I would separate them by that opportunity. Yeah, fair. All I right. actually would like my team a lot if I didn't go with – if I went to a over Dak. I'm actually kind of curious now because these, these, <laughs> these receivers, it's like, all right, I went young and flexible up top. If, if it pans out, like you said, if you think those guys both produce, this team could end up being cooking. Like, if a Dak we expect to produce again. Sure. Pittman and DK, I think, are stable – Wide receiver two and three for this team. It's a strong bet, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a lot of risk in those guys, to be honest with you, because it's not which like ones. Oh, sorry, Caleb and Malik. Okay. Like I think here's the thing. Here's the way I'm picturing it playing out, and I don't think this is even close to far fetched at all, based on all the transactions recently. Okay. Caleb's going one to Chicago. I would put my life on it, and they've built around him in in the way that most number one overall picks don't get the. Uh, Agreed. Don't get the you know the, the, it's, the it's impossible. Outing, right? It's impossible. So as long as he's like good, he's going to be fine. And you know, for a super flex quarterback, he'll be fine. I think he'll hit his upside probably next year. Malik Neighbors, I think, is going to end up going number five overall to the Chargers, replacing Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, and I think he'll see 130, 140 targets off the rip and be electric with them. That that's where I'm looking at. I think both of them will be able to produce right away. And then next year, their value, they're bo- they'll both be first-round startup value picks. Well, it, okay, so to your point, if they both hit, they will. I think what's really interesting and why I don't mind, uh, regardless of what you do after, those two, I feel like their uh, perception right now by the community is so high that even if they don't smash, I feel like they're not going to tread a lot of water. Yeah. I don't think Caleb goes past – I don't think he's going to get drafted um, after a Dak Prescott, even if he has a down year. Like – we're going to give him time. Yeah, We're going to give him time. We're going to give yeah. Malik time. No, like people aren't going to panic on those guys, I don't think. Yeah, well, I don't think they're going to panic. Was, I, I think they could. Like, if Caleb has a bad year with the surroundings that he has now, I think there could be a little bit of panic. He, like he'd have to, if, he, if he had a Bryce Young-type season with the weapons of DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, well, and all, all that, like, yes. What kind of excuses do you have for Caleb if he has a bad year? There aren't a lot of, like, variable pieces I, to it. I guess to your point, it, it depends on the level of it. If he, like, sucks it up, he's talking about quarterback 26, 28, yeah, we're in trouble. This fucking guy out here not drafting a quarterback. Three running backs and Xavier Worthy. Dude, that's definitely that's 100% yelling at Nick. 601, Xavier Worthy. (laughs) What a dickhead. Dude, Joshy, I'm not going to lie. I love what you're doing right now. No, you don't. 601? That is 100% a shot at Nick. That's crazy. (laughs) Crazy. That is crazy. Over the starting QBs. Bro, that is bizarre. That is insanely high. What does that make him at the rookie pick right now, by the way? Is that the 108? After Brian Thomas. 108? So he's in. Or 109. He's after Brock Bowers, Brian Thomas. And J.J. McCarthy. So, yeah, 109, I think. Yeah, 109. That's uh, – I guess that's not. That's crispy. Ahead of T? Yeah. Ahead of so, you're, you're kind of going Whoa. down the same route as me. Were Justin you like Fields without a home still going at the 604, huh? Jeez. That sounds crazy. But you Absolutely. got a lot of old old players as well, like Diggs and Tyreek. Yeah, so I, I felt like when I was, when I was again, getting to that point, it felt like Diggs' value was pretty good. And I saw that I had Tyreek on my roster, and I felt to myself, if I can have – both Tyreek and Diggs as top 12 wide receivers next year. And then you get to pair, you know, consciously pair them with a younger Brandon Ayuk, a younger T. Higgins. You're kind of <clears throat> hedging the age of these two, but still also having a real opportunity at taking a championship away year one. Yeah. that's It just felt like it was too good to pass up that type of value on Diggs. Oh, man. And I also knew, I will say, in that same tier, I had like Zay Flowers, T. Higgins, Jordan Addison, and uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. So I was just going to let whichever one of those four fall to me after taking digs. That's fair. Upside in the sixth round, where? So far, just realistically, these 601 to 607. Like, I, don't, I don't know about that crazy high upside, frankly. Mm, some people would argue with you about JSN. I feel like some people. Damn, I really wanted to go with a fucking young tight end here. still say that T. Can't Higgins could potentially 18. have some upside. Maybe this man about to use the whole clock. Maybe Pickens, people would argue, upside with Deontay gone. I mean, supposedly. It, I, Four, three, oh. I'll inject a little more youth in here. Okay. You, you're you're big on Jaden Reed. No reason not to be. I, I was just giving you the floor to talk. Yap, tell me why. <laughs> tell us why. I just liked him coming in, and I feel like he didn't disappoint at all last year. Well, he, yeah, he definitely didn't disappoint. I think people like – I think, okay, I think if he had more pedigree coming in, people – Agreed. People were very hesitant to like label him the wide receiver one in Green Bay when he very clearly on a week to week basis just was. Yeah, he was I just agree. better than everybody else, and it just like took a long time because you're like, oh, he's a slot guy. Oh, he's like a. He was even. I mean, he got draft the, draft capital second round. Yeah, the, you know what the the only thing you talk about there. Uh, why not? The only interesting case is 
he was definitely the wide receiver one, but I it didn't feel that way in the coach's mind because they wouldn't put him in enough plays. That's I don't. Fair. That's what I don't understand. That's fair. Well, I also think they gave like veteran preference there a little bit too. Like Romeo Dobbs got his plays, like yeah. all that kind of stuff. Where like Jaden Reed, I'm projecting going forward. I'd imagine he's going to be in a 90% player. I think year. I think Jaden Reed's outlook a lot depends on what you think in view of Watson, Christian Watson, who yeah. got hurt and yeah. missed a lot of time last I year. I personally am not a fan of Christian Watson, personally. I'm, I'm not off. I'm not completely off Christian Watson. Like, to be honest with you, I, w- I, would, I might think about taking him on the swing turn around here. And just Debo. The Let's go Debo cheese. on it. Yeah. Let's go Debo on it. Where you guys at on Debo? Debo, I was thinking about Debo between him and Jaden Reed for sure. He's another one of those, like, mid-round wide receivers that – will just, like, anchor your team for two or three years and just underratedly allow you not Whoa. to move off that. Hollywood did oh, not get sniped. Bad. Andrew hey, may hey, have. Hey, hey. Kansas City hype right there. Goodness, dude. That's wow. Okay. Oh, Wait, so you're telling me I, I don't have Frankie or whatever his name is in my league, but. Yes, you do. He's on. He's, I can, this is a league. I can flip my Hollywood Brown shares for Debo Samuel or. No. Coming. You can flip Hollywood Brown for Deshaun Watson right now. <laughs> Basically, what? That's what, Straight what he said up. You. Sheesh. I'll tell you, my league's not This is why I took – people probably hate it. I actually don't really love it, but this is why I took McCarthy and Goff. Is like this tier of receivers for me, I'm I'm comfortable You're for a minute soaking here. Soaking it up. No, that's so fucking real. There's like 10 receivers in a row that I like. I did just get fucking sniped right there, though. Wow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That was you know, a nice combo. Video. That was – oh. Debo and Mike. Y'all, with, y'all almost saw me just Gibbs really flex. Hero. I was going mm. – now I got to go home. No, I really don't. I feel like I'm going to hometown, but it's too early. But I won't get him at 811. Where y'all at with Amari here? Is that too much of a reach? Uh, I'm Let's just talk it out. I, want, I need some sense talked into me. I probably am. I don't hate the pick here, but I feel like. Who are you taking ahead? This, this, I got 25 I lo- seconds. Dude, I, I don't hate Devontae here. I kind of feel like he's being thrown into like the fucking Cooper Cup tier, which in my mind, Devontae was just as good as he's ever been last year. His situation was just atrocious. I feel like that whole tier of like Chris Godwin, Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin, like I feel like they all are just like you know the same what? guy. <laughs> I'm going to take a shot on Terry getting a QB. Mm, I don't hate that either. He probably will. Know. Well, he's going to get, I don't, we don't know if they're any good, but he's going to get one. He's going to get one. He's going to give you 1,006. That's fucking fine. Again, like, uh, it's so hard for me to pick there. To your point, Devontae Adams, Terry McLaurin. I definitely think Amari for a one- or two-year window is very similar to Devontae. Maybe probably an edge to Devontae. By the way, he went one pick after. So, did that snipe you? You got one more still. I know who I want here. I, we'll see if I get This isn't live. Misfits don't know. You can tell them. That. I, w- I want <laughs> Kenneth Walker. Okay. I want Kenneth Walker. Wow, Troy Franklin, huh? As my uh, – mm. As my hero RB, you know, we talked about how none, none of us really, like, love Kenneth Walker as, as like, a, as an asset. But down here at the 7-5. As Brother, I said that in, a, in the startup, I don't like him in the fifth. This is 7 5 Exactly. Yeah. So, it's I haven't taken case. a running back yet. And I'm not even, like, I don't even feel like Walker's going to give me top five upside, really. But Week to week, he does, not not this, year long. Yeah. At this point, at this point, I'm just looking for kind of points. And I'm like, Walker's better than the, oh, he's just going to get me points type yeah, running back. This was, this was the well, tier me, to have him in. And honestly, he was in my Q2. Yeah. What do you guys think uh, back to back there? Rashad White, Kenneth Walker, what's the difference? Who do you like? I prefer White, personally. Ooh. I don't think White's that good of a running back, to be honest with you. I think a lot of it's just shadowed by situation. Tampa Bay just throwing the ball to him a million times. But then again, you can make the argument like nothing changed. So why can't he just do it again? They're going similar in startups like this. 508, 6, 508 think, 602 versus this is 705, 706. So how, Walker, I think worst case scenario happened. Had Matt Matt and I. What worst case scenario happened with Walker last year where he got hurt? Zach Charbonnet was drafted in the second round. And it was like a bad year, but I don't think it gets worse from there. My problem with Rashad White is if they, you, they tried desperately to add another piece in that backfield for – uh, for Tampa Bay, true. If if they go out and draft a guy in the top three to four rounds, I think that spells a little bit of trouble for Rashad White. I mean, uh, I, I think Rashad White's situation. It's not picking for me. Well, I might need to commish. Uh, uh, leave the draft. There we go. I, yeah, I'm trying to. I was trying to get Josh Jacobs. All right, free agency, Green Bay. I tell you what, Andrew. Uh, much like he said on the trade show, I don't know if this is before or after, but I like to contend. The man does not lie. That boy is going for the jugular early. It's not fun rebuilding. <laughs> it's not I fun. actually, you know, can I tell you why I think what makes me a degenerate is I actually really like to rebuild. I think I think the practice not me, dog. is fun. Nick, Nick says he'll never rebuild again. a little bit better. What? I think winning a championship and getting some cash, that's a little bit better to me than rebuilding. 
Sure. But, I mean, what, why not win? And then I, I, one of the best things to do is actually win, play a bunch of years for free, and rebuild then, too. Yeah. I, I love doing that. But I'll, I'll stretch that contending window out further probably to try and win a couple times. But then you might make the rebuild longer when it comes. I won two more times. Then you're going to dip on the league, ain't on you? It. You one of them. I'm on uh, it. I commissioned the league. Damn, you want to leave someone else to commission it too? That's messed up. All right, no quarterback. Definitely another seven, eight. Oh, here we go. Sean, okay. That's not bad. Uh, he was definitely in my queue. He's what do gonna, we got next? Gonna Is he going to go double QB? He's going to double tap. But who? He should, probably. Who y'all got if he's going to take him on? Stafford. Okay. I Stafford mean, if you're going to go. Dude, look cold. at this tight end to your drop. It's, yeah, it's I'm real. out. It's now you're real. out, right? I will say, if you're going to do what Joshy did, that's not. Those aren't bad options to go with the quarterback seven and eight. Not at all. Short window with Stafford, but you're hoping for one or two more years. Watson. I think the other interesting way to look at this, too, now is, like, now that I look at my draft, okay. I'm like, I'm not – if I'm a Deshaun Watson owner, I'm not trading him for Jaden Reed. But I took Jaden Reed over Deshaun Watson straight up. Yep. Like, I think that's another helpful exercise in a startup draft. It's kind of like – where is the trade value going to go? Because, listen, you take Watson there, at any time you can go to the Jaden Reed owner and be like, I'm going to give you Watson. If not, you don't have to do it. But that that I look back on that, and now I'm like, okay, I'm probably making a mistake there. The only, the only thing is, I, I will say, and I think it's just the community as a whole is just, they feel it feels so out on Watson. People act like he is just done and cooked. It, it could be, but that's where his value is at. No, I, I agree with that for sure. But it, almost like the point remains of like Jaden Reed or if someone came to me and said like, I'll give you Bryce Young for Jaden Reed right now. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably just going to take that too. Yeah. I will say right there, if we were actually playing with more bench pieces and actually doing a league, I probably would have taken Baker Mayfield just to get my QB three. But because we only have one bench spot, I'm playing for the uh, audience, and I want to have people say I have the best team. So I'm going to take Joe Mixon. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that just seems yeah. antithetical. Why would you take Joe Mixon if you want the best team? Uh, because I think he can give me running back one numbers, and I just drafted him as the who? I don't know who are you talking about. Joe Mixon, brother. I think he's going to give running back one numbers. Hey, bookmark it right now. You got him as a top 12 finisher this year? Joe Mixon will have a top 12 finish in 2024. All right, there's the spiciness. Let's get it. Mark it down, boys. Wow. I'll take my QB3 here. Damn. You just really threw him a lob, didn't you? Assuming assuming he stays healthy. I would I would have taken a quarterback there regardless. I was Now do you feel like you did the right thing though with getting Baker there? What's the difference in him and Watson? Yeah, um Obviously hindsight 20. I mean, I guess the way to look at this is like Watson and I like Baker over Watson. Watson and Christian Kirk, or I guess he kind of went off the board already, but I would have been, eh, whatever. Watson and uh, Amari Cooper, Watson and Deontay Johnson versus Baker and Jaden Reed. I guess that's a question I kind of asked myself. And what do you like? Which one do you want? I want the Jaden Reed and Baker side. Yeah, I think I lean that way too, I guess. Damn it, I done did it again. Man, I outdid it itself, again. except for. Uh, I respect myself. Dude, so much. You, you guys I respect keep, what I just did. These guys really keep agreeing with themselves this weekend. It's kind of getting crazy. Bo Nix. I am go. very I was agreeable. Wondering wow. I was going off the board. All right, I don't mind. I don't. I don't mind it considering I already have three. I really quarters. Think Caleb fifth overall. Dude, was can, that was that a really I tell you, cheesy play by me not to I, take the QB? I need just song. The, song, don't yeah. do this. Do not do this because I'll be. I was gonna take Amari, and I'm like, you know what? You're fine. I have a shot. I don't think he's taking Amari. Don't you fucking jinx Based me. on his team build, uh, I, I feel don't like know. the mafia suit might have just jinxed me. He's texting right now to take Amari. <laughs> I mean, it's dude. This is definitely the range. What you guys don't like. You guys don't like my strategy of taking the veteran running backs in a start? I have no mental capacity to think no, about anything other than Amari. Pretty much like they are my least favorite asset. Dude, I'm cur- I would actually curious to see what Mixon's ADP will be, but I don't think it'll be eighth round. I feel like close. I feel like punting early the running Three, back and then going two, into here and being one. We got an auto. Get- we got an auto. Oh, he's getting kicked out for life. And people in the BG Discord know if you come into a mock draft and you time out, you're out for no. Life. That that just. Brother, ah, you did him. that. I'm back. No, I didn't touch nothing. How, he already picked Cooper, and then it went to or Cooper Cup, and then it went to Mark Cooper. I'm calling BS. I didn't touch. They anything. said wrong Cooper. I you need, were looking at me. I was yelling at I'll you. you. I need what, the though? commissioner to intervene here. This no, no, is no. Cooper Cup pick. Go. What it probably did was he probably nah. picked and it was spinning, and then it. Audience, yeah. are y'all seeing? You know what? Nick, song to song yeah. is back in. For Nick life. was like, "Listen, he's, he's not going to." Nick life. was like, "He's not going to take Amari Cooper," and then he saw the auto pick happen. And he's oh. doing this for the clicks. I don't do nothing. 
I didn't, you I clicked didn't, for the click. That's messed I up. I didn't know you were gonna sell your soul like that. That was goaded. Crazy. That is absolutely. Well, do now, you want Cooper now Cup? Can you pivots. That is absolutely. Feels like you can't. Feels like a lot of excuses. That is incredibly fucked up. But we'll still take it. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. This I guess we'll just I have got, to go. Uh, feels like I'm winning. That's just. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Everything about my draft feels not Yucky. good now. Yucks. I got played. I got totally played. It was supposed to be flip flop. Yeah. We actually saw it happen. <laughs> like that feels like a review. I Tony, didn't even see that happen. Tony, to if you can Bruh. get it, replay that, dude. No, you can 100% see it go from Cooper Cup to Amari Cooper. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, we got the screen recording. He's going to be on the screen. Edit that. Just show us That's that. So, do so not well. edit it because I then need, it'll be I fake. A, I need a shot of me yelling at you while the switch happens so there's a confirmation I didn't touch nothing. Brother, this is a – this is <laughs> – this <laughs> New York New York is absolutely wrong for this. Yeah, here, it's spooky hours. Dude's blaming it on Ooh, the whole city. How do you all feel about Jahan Dotson? I don't feel good. Uh, honestly, kind of a – Kind of a guy that you could Curtis buy Samuel, on right Curtis now. Samuel gone, and they're going to get a quarterback in there. Yeah, I feel like a good buy low window. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people have the reaction that Adam just had where he says, I don't like him. <laughs> so I feel Fair. like that's a good chance to buy in. I don't like him. <laughs> Bang. Keon. Oh, I meant to fucking take him, and I forgot about his ass. And you thought we were out, but we're bike. All right, you got me there. I ain't. Don't get me started. You cook me. These young boys out here forgetting about oh, Keon. I meant to take his ass. Andrew thought I'd forget about Keon. Get the hell out I, I of here. I didn't forget. I just Keenan. didn't have him on my board. Damn, I'm man. Just I'm just kidding. Imagine taking Mixon a full 12 picks ahead of Keon. Makes me sick. I'll get more fantasy Wildness. for the next two years, buddy. Wildness. Lad. The Ladster. Welcome to the squad. The only thing that happened there was I reminded Nick that Lad was still around. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I will admit that that was... Keon was in my queue, but I forgot to look at my queue for the last... Are you Keon time. over Lad? Uh, for now, yeah. Keon over I'm Lad. Just, I'm just asking. Laddie boy. Get out of here. Imagine trying to... I'm Keon over Lad for now, but I think... Close. Okay, so Lad feels like he's for sure from pick 33 to 40, where Keon can go anywhere from like 25 to 50, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, I think he has a wider range of NFL drafts. You think Keon could fall out of round two? Okay, I agree. I just want to make sure. People are really... Polar, like he's polarizing. Some people are really out on Keon. Yeah, Tony Pollard and Taja going bike to bike. Yeah. Interesting. I'll be taking the RB one of the Titans. Thank you very much, Tony Pollard. That's what and he said. Interesting. I'm curious what you guys think about with Russ uh, going to Pittsburgh. Gosh, I feel like Najee. That was my pick. Najee right is really, really valuable at this late in the game, man. Really, that was my Ninth pick. round. Like the last guy I ever want. Really? Ever. Yeah. I, don't I feel care. like at this range, you can tell me he's about to average twenty points per game next year, and I'm just like, I don't even want. You've him. always hated Najee. I didn't realize that until uh, just now. No, I hated him a lot. I didn't hate him as a rookie. After, Sophomore year, I was super out on him. Well, I was just gonna say, going into I his second year, nailed it. Going into his second year, he was going in Bijan range. For those that don't, yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. You guys tell me. I'm I'm between two guys. I'll let you guys kind of walk that through this. That is definitely one. a pause. Holy man. Josh macro. Downs, Calvin Ridley. Um, I love Downs. What's the fact that you got a do, do you have a Do you have a third option? It's those two. Uh, I wanted Deontay Johnson. If With your build, I'm probably taking Ridley, but Downs is – they're the same. Downs feels like he's in Jaden Reed territory for me a little bit where – I don't actually – I feel I like a rich passing volume doesn't really go with Downs. That's my problem. That's, I like Downs a player. Fair. No, that's fair. I, I guess I look at – their weapons, though, and they have nothing outside of Pittman and Josh Downs. Yeah, I agree. And I think you're right, too. Except for JT. The, the stack gives you a little bit extra icing on the cake. I like that. I think you mix in – I think you need to go a little youthful there to, like, have a sprinkle on the bench as well. The, man, so now – If you took Calvin Ridley by next year, there's a chance that, like, you're working with a lot of declining assets. Yeah. We're starting at least nine. So, I mean, you're starting weekly mixing and downs. How are you feeling about that? I feel very good about starting mixing. I Well, obviously, you have them downs, top 12. Downs – I mean, you don't necessarily have to start okay, downs because your next flex pick could be a veteran. And let's like clarify this, That's Adam, fair. because you said I have him top 12. I don't have Joe Mixon as a top 12 dynasty running You back. have him finishing in the top 12. I think he can finish top 12 this year. Yes. That's so, what we're saying the same thing. Okay. I'm not trying to out you. I though. just wanted to clarify because you That's said fair. I had him top 12. I didn't want the audience to feel like I'm sitting here having Joe Mixon. You don't have him as your top 12 dynasty running backs, but you think he could finish top 12 this year. Yeah, and I'm – more than happy to take value on the running backs because, like you said, wow, before, this is uh, getting crazy gross. I'm listening. This is a position where you're likely cycling guys in and out 
on a year by year basis. So if I feel like Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon can both have top twelve upside this year, why not cycle them in? It, it, especially when I went so heavy at the wide receiver in the quarterback position early, I feel safe there. Okay. Ooh. Jason Oki. Williams or or Jahan Dotson? Dotson. Dude, this is the question. I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm going to bunch them in the exact same category to me. This is where it feels like we're betting on the young upside that just traditionally when you look at what JMO hasn't done and what Dotson hasn't done going into this part of their career, bad bets. So Honestly, I, I, I would say if you had to make me pick one, I'm going to take Dotson because I think the opportunity. You'd rather, you'd rather go with like an unproven rookie though? Yes, because of the tradeability aspect. Dotson's Ooh, done a lot more than this guy goes Jamo and J-Mo. fucking Quentin Johnson and brother. He's he's just allured by. You look at his team. You look at his team. Herbert, H. N. Kincaid, Watson, Jamo, Quentin Johnson. Like he mm-hmm. he likes shiny things. Dude, I'm just gonna say Jamo and you're not, you're not on it. You're Jamo on it. and Quentin Johnson back to back is so hard to <laughs> Why watch. Not both? Why not both? Atta Quentin boy. Johnson at a boy, especially when they're starting quarterbacks sitting there. Ooh, okay, I like this little run of rookie running backs right now. Nick is like, I'm getting the next one. Nah, not me, though. I want Najee bad. Y'all all wearing caps in a bit. Why not both? What are you doing? Nicky, he's up here in a couple. Uh, I'm looking Who are you at, looking at? I'm looking at Evan Ingram or Njoku, probably. I love oh, where your head's at, end. and that's uh, I'm now in the range where I'm looking at these tight ends a little Ooh, bit. Oh, okay, there goes Jake. Berkey. He already has a tight end, though, this next guy. So, someone took Bowers, Laporta, and Kittle. That's because he'd go. That is wild. He just joined the draft to mess with us. He also got your Amari Cooper. He was on the trade show, and it feels like he's he heard everything we put on the trade show about, and he hasn't seen it yet. Wildness. Wait. He's taking three tight ends. And Andrew, what do, you think of, what do you think about this little run here in the 10th? So, Jonathan Brooks, Quentin Johnson, Calvin Ridley, Trey Benson, Blake Corum, Bergie. It feels – it very much feels like this is the round where – I mean, look at some of the other running backs on the board. You this have feels Alvin like a Kamara. good 10th round. This you feels have, like a stronger 10th round than, it, than you usually I, see. Stalker. You know why? Because the guys like Mixon and, you know, uh, Henry, all this little free agency bump, I think, moved a lot of these guys up. Yeah. Pollard. And then I, I'm not going to – I'm. it's kind of crazy, man. The 10th round does feel decent in this draft. Facts. Like I, f- and I, I guess it always does – Feel like you know you still got guys that you want in the tenth, eleventh, twelfth round, but I feel like I got guys that like I want that I know I'm about to start immediately. I think the uh, the ten it, it is though the tenth and the twelfth is the range, and then it's like all right, you get to the thirteenth, you start really feeling yeah. like I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. All right, yeah, I took Ingram. Ingram there. Nice. I, I think uh, nice pick. I mean Jacksonville now without Ridley, there's just a lot of targets to be had. And Ingram had a great year last year, so I feel good about it. Wow, Russell Wilson was a quick one there. Mm. All right, so uh, do I think that this person's going to double tap tight end? I don't. What am I doing? You know what? I'm going to back it up. He's definitely not because he's got only one. Pause. I'm going to back it up. Najee. Yeah, that's a good pick. I bet he I bet he wanted to go double run. Dude, I, Najee at almost the 11th round feels like what? how could you not? Way too early. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> feels like he's a 13th round. No, nah, no, nah, I, I, agree, I agree with you there. I, like, you got Arthur Smith coming over. He's going to use them the same fucking way. It was like Bijan, Algier. Najee going to get a lot of work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, with the running backs, the rookie running backs coming off the board in that round, Brooks, Benson, Corum, I definitely don't hate the order of that. I uh, that It's kind of the order that I have them in right now. Kamara, okay. Najee could have been in his queue. Yeah, I don't hate that at all. This, I, I, I like the idea of, of peppering some rookie running backs. Savior. Ooh, spicy. This is, this is going exactly... I wish there was just Dude, a rookie tag. I'm just oh, there is a rookie I, tag. I, the uh, the whole auto pick gate is gonna have to be investigated. If that's Amari Cooper versus Cooper Cup, I mean, goodness, I feel so much different about this team. You know what, guys? I feel like and then I stack David and Joku with Amari, and we're we're so we're so there. I feel like I've done this multiple times, multiple years. It feels like in startup drafts, especially at this time of the year. Yeah. Every build that I have, I never come away with rookies. I just can't buy into them in the startups at their costs. Why do you hate them? I just I think there's too much risk in them a- at this point, not knowing landing spots, not knowing things like that. Like That's because you want to hold everything too long. I think more so because I play in that lens that we talked about where it's like I'm – Is that a I right assessment win. or no? Is that a correct assessment or no? Like do you typically when you draft, you want to hold for a while? Yeah, I think I want to I wanna be able to – Envision this as my lineup that I'm going into the year. I, I yeah. kind of feel the same way for a long time. Unless the, the only way I usually draft rookies in the startup draft, and obviously this is a different um, – Gabe Davis, 1104. This is a different animal. Jacoby. There you go. Put my, my money where my mouth is. Okay. 
Um, mm. Like, this is the perfect scenario where Jacoby is now my fifth, like, my fifth flex player. Like, I got my three starting wide receivers, uh, maybe whoever the fuck it is in my flex one, and then Jacoby's, like, my flex two, where I feel great about ha- him giving me 10, 11 points. No. Right? Michael Wilson <laughs> at the <laughs> 1107. That's a, that's a real BDG. What right are we doing? Wow. Um, On brand. W- w- oh, yeah. Rookies, like, unless my strategy going into the draft is, like, I'm going only youth. Then I feel a little bit weird going with rookies in like the sixth, seventh round. But there's also a point I was making uh, in in one of my recent videos was like everyone loves rookies in terms of uh, when you're in the rookie draft, right? It's like, oh, uh, Troy Franklin feels real good right now next to Xavier Leggett and these guys. When you're in a startup draft, though, that's why I feel like they're good value because now you're picking between Troy Franklin – Debo Samuel, Mike Evans is like their name sounds a little bit less enticing when you got those well, other guys. That's around. exactly yep. what it is because it's it's I'm sitting here looking at the Colton board Schultz, huh? and I'm like I have to pick between him and a proven asset that I know can be competitive for my roster for the next year or two. Yeah. Like it just feels like why not take the proven guy? Well, that's why I feel like rookies are. I, I think a lot of people probably think that way, myself included, which is why I almost feel like the rookies are kind of a good value sometimes. Mm-hmm. Very, and I also feel like maybe it's also from like times. We were just talking about it earlier today, like where we did rookie drafts before we knew landing spots in 2022, and you were drafting Matt Corral, Sam Howell, yeah, yeah. and then you're getting totally burnt, like just because you made those picks, and it's like pissing away a ninth round startup pick, and you look back and you're like, man, that was such a bad mistake. Yeah, but you could have. Let's. I, it just feels like I I don't want to have that risk in my startup. Let's let's quickly yap about some of the teams that we're looking at as they're okay. and, and like like Andrew said, if you were t- walking this all the way into the start of the year. How are we feeling? About my team? Yeah, we, we could do ours, and then we could also look at the other ones real yeah. quick on yeah, the way out. Nick, run us through your team real quick. Top sure. to bottom. Yeah, so we got Caleb Williams, Malik Neighbors, Dak, Michael Pittman, DK Metcalf, Jaden Reed, Kenneth Walker, Baker Mayfield, Lad McConkey, Evan Ingram, Jacoby Myers. I feel I feel really good. Like, I don't feel like I look at any spots and be like, I whiffed on that pick. I think maybe Jaden Reed, I went a little bit earlier on than I would have liked to, but it was the fact that I've, I went with, like, multiple veteran wide receivers before him, and I was like, I want to go a little bit more youthful. I would have, again, preferred going Tua over Dak now that I look back on it. Otherwise, like, because we were capped at 11, uh, maybe I would have went with a different running back instead of Jacoby. But if this was a real draft, this is how – I'm not concerned about my RB2 spot huh. up at this point in the draft because I could still get – Look at, right there Aaron on the queue. Yeah. There's Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Jones, Jones Jalen Warren. Right. I'm not worried about the, the 10 points I'm going to get from my RB2. So I'm continuing to stack up dudes that I feel really good about from my flex spot for the next two to three years, which are the Jacoby Myers types, even like the Cortland Suttons, whoever those guys may be. Um, so I feel I, I feel good about my team in this. I like it. Okay. Uh, Andrew, I know there's no way you hate your team. <laughs> no, I honestly, if I'm looking at it right now, like I, I feel like it ended up being a little bit more veteran focused than I had imagined it would look like when I went into it. But I okay. think that's kind of just – I ended up playing the board, and it felt like the value was falling that way, and that's I just kind of let the draft dictate the lineup at that point. Yeah, see, um, f- for me, sorry to cut in, but, like, that's the difference between, I think, the way that maybe we're drafting is, like, obviously, Jacobs and Mixon are a little bit higher in value, but veteran running backs, like, I want no part of them in the startup draft, so rather than going with a Mixon in round eight, I had a preferred a, an Aaron Jones in round 11, and that obviously comes at the difference of our player opinions on those specific dudes. For sure. But, right. like, that's how I'm looking at For these. For sure. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think, to me, it just – I early on when I saw that Tyreek Hill had fallen and then I got Stephon Diggs, it was like, okay, this is a roster that has a good chance to really be super competitive year one. Why not add the veteran running backs and Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon, who I do think both could have top 12 finishes in yeah. 2024. I see, like, Javante going three picks after Mixon, and, like, I know you're not as big on Javante anymore and you like Mixon a lot, but I'm looking at the dynasty star of I'm like, yeah, give me – Give me five years younger, Joe Mixon. Makes sense. At this point. Makes sense. I just think for me, it's just, yeah, it was just let's get this money right away. I mean, why not? <laughs> and I can I can fix the running back position later. That's the that's the easiest position for you to fix. I was I was gonna league. say yeah, like the rest, like you got a Rich and Kyler who should be absolute home runs. I, I don't QB, have to look at the QB again. Four for wide years. receivers that should give you a fuckload of points weekly. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the top of your lineup is definitely. Sad. And then I felt like I got some pretty pretty good value at the tight end position in Schultz. Like mm-hmm. I he could give you the same points that guys like Evan Ingram, George Kittle, and stuff were giving you, and they went two rounds earlier. So It's funny because when Nick brought up that exercise, and I think that was like – I think a good example of why I don't like mixing it 803. I know I understand you do. It's fine. But the reason – if that 1109 doesn't go run in front of you – like James Conner actually finished as a top 10 back last year, yeah. right? Like I'd almost rather uh, him straight up than mixing in 
I, I know what his situation is. I've, I've seen him in it. I think they both have the, the age thing against them where if they get injured or whatever, what do we got? Joe Mixon was running back six last year. He running was. Running back ten the year before. Running back four the year before. Like Right, but, I, okay, so now the question is then, like, Calvin Ridley versus Amari Cooper, Chris Godwin, that type of conversation, right? Because the – if, J- if James Conner's a top 10 option, too, that's what right, I'm guessing. Right, right. Uh, it's, it's a conversation. Yeah, I'm not saying you definitely screwed up. Yeah, it definitely gets into that conversation. I think maybe it's more so, and I, I understand that, I mean, we talked about it in the trade show. Like, Joe Mixon, actually, this was in the free agent show that we talked about it. But Joe Mixon, like, he's a player that is very polarizing. You're either going to love him or hate him. What I think this really comes down to him. is, like, we're almost speaking of it from more of a strategy standpoint. Correct. I think you're like, I like Joe Mixon. You bought in. It's me. It's like, I like Aaron Jones a lot, but like I just have a veteran running backs are just not something I'm. It's almost like I'm not investing in them in single digit rounds, no matter how much I like the player. Makes sense. If you're 28, you're pretty much off my board. Makes sense. And and I just to you know conclude where we were at. It's just I feel like with the way that my build started in the beginning, where I locked down both younger franchise, you know, quarterbacks and four wide receivers that are going to be very very. You're taking your swing. I get it. You just. Close this up, and why not? All right. I mean, again, with just difference of opinion, it doesn't mean one's right or wrong. No. All right. On my team, uh, when I look at it, I definitely think Amari Cooper is the difference. Um, I I'm, don't know how that happens, but if I, <laughs> I – I look at it right. This is, uh, in hindsight, 2020, I didn't draft this specifically, or to your point, it was flexible how it would work. I think McCarthy, with the right situation, I like it, but I get golf to kind of let McCarthy groom, right, so I can let McCarthy sit. And I think the same thing with Keon. Like, I have a guy like Cooper Cup, um, Terry McLaurin, that can start. I don't have to start Keon right away, so I can be a little more patient with those guys. And I think I, my lineup's still pretty good uh, with Mahomes. Kind of funny, like, how every uh, every uncertain quarterback, rookie quarterback prospect, always goes at that, like, four or five turn. Yeah. I remember that's where, like, Zach Wilson was going. Like, I remember those guys where people were like, ah, got drafted really early, but I don't know about him as a prospect. He just ends up falling right there every time. Yep. And – Trey See, Lance was there. It'll no, be Lance was way higher because of his rushing ability. There. Now, again, like, so this, this is the difference. I just always look when I'm – if it's a mock or not, I just view it the same like I'm drafting a real team. I feel like I'm always going to be able to end up trading a McCarthy or a Goff when I draft them there to some somebody like Misfits doesn't take his – only second quarterback's Bo Nix. May not even have a starting job. And, and then, you know, I could maybe replace that quarterback three that I took early with exponential value in skill players somehow. Fair. Yeah, I think that's maybe just the difference between the way that I go about my startup drafts compared to where you're at is I think for me, when I'm drafting my startup, the first thought right after we complete it is not, okay, now where can I capitalize in trade rooms? Mm. It's let's let the market settle because we don't know what the market is of this league yet. Yeah, let's for let sure. the market settle. Let's kind of let it dictate where it is and then make moves. So I do kind of yeah. go to the point of that's let's let's let this sit for a little bit. I'm definitely more that as well than like let's let's make moves right away I think where my difference comes in is I'm almost like player agnostic once I get yeah. past the fifth I think fifth round is where I cut off where I'm like don't care about the actual player I'm drafting I'm way more team building and strategy building right now like okay. yep like we said like I'm not in love with Kenneth Walker I'm not in love with Lab McConkey I'm not in love with most of these players but I like what they stand for as, as a dynasty because we've played dynasty long enough to know that like these assets. The, the opinions that I've had about players have been so wrong so often that, like, I'm just mixing and matching things but that I've seen do well. You're embracing variance. Exactly. That's really what it comes down to. It's like, okay, Jaden Reed, maybe he doesn't hit. Maybe Pat McConkie hits. Maybe Jacoby Myers is good for four years. Maybe he's good for one. You know what I mean? There's just so it's many funny. Moving parts that it's like, here are, the, here are the things that I feel like have the highest percent of chances of being good based on my experience over the years. It's so funny like, because uh, I was uh, – Known Jordan Love hater, he's going at two hundred two in this, right? Don't you wish you took him? A couple you know, of you know, you know, here? you know. Oh, do I? Do I wish I would have traded for him for a single first when it right. could have been had? When I said don't do it, I'm <laughs> one of the biggest Debo haters as far as their the value goes. I took him at the six eleven because at that point, how do you pass on that value? Yeah. So I'm with you, probably more so the player agnostic in a startup. Now, I definitely agree with a point you made, Andrew. Though that you don't know what the the market is of this league, you don't know how trade happy it's going to be. I tend to be if I draft like this though. I'm going to try to shake up the market. I'm going to try to create the market. I'm going to be the market. Makes sense. I've seen guys come in and try and do that, and I've seen guys not do well at trying to create the market. I'm not saying that you wouldn't, but at the same time, like, it's just I think there is risk in for sure. drafting a startup player 
I think the risk in drafting a startup player with the ideas that I can trade him later or I can do this and gain an, a value edge is just as risky as drafting the veteran that you think can produce right away. Yeah. For sure. I feel like I did both. Yeah. I got, I, got a, I got a decent starting lineup. I feel, I feel okay with it, and then I think I have some cards I can play with. But we'll see. Uh, we will never know what this draft ends up being because <laughs> it's a mock draft, unfortunately. Um, it would be fucking cool as hell if, like, Sleeper had some kind of thing that, like, you know played we could, out a league. Dude, it, this is what actually, for mock drafts, would be super cool is if we did, like, a, it's like an underdog format. Like, this is no trades, no best ball deal out of this. Like, here's a mock draft. Let's just see what would have happened. Yeah. I mean, we literally can. They have best ball leagues on there. I just yeah. don't want to, like, fuck up my Sleeper, like, uh, UI, UX. We'll make a, uh, we'll, make an, we'll make a, we'll make an, we'll make an alternate username. You can hide them. That could actually work. That would be kind of sick. Yeah. All right, Dan. I got y'all. All right, Dan. We're going to have, see, we're going to see if, An where Andrew puts his money where his mouth is on this squad, huh? I think this team would you think it's dominate gonna run? in year one. Well, of course, you drafted it. Nah. Yeah. I think you got no starable players by year three. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Not even a rich. Dang. Well, what did he say? He said, if I win this year, I get to play for free for a couple more years. That's, so. that's a fair point, though. Yeah, you do. All right, Dan. Um, Except there's we're no gonna, money in this We're going to wrap right there. And if you want to be in the next mock draft that we do, make sure you are in the Discord, of course, and we will be throwing out announcements. But more importantly, if you want to be in a Dynasty League, we are also setting those up for you in the Discord. It's all happening in the Discord. So just fucking get in there, start yapping, throw Hint. your trade screenshots in there with the hashtag, Hank. do whatever you got to do. We'll see you in there. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the button that looks like this if you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you all on, I think, Thursday probably. Love you.